I'm going to start um, with the genesis of Jasmine. Uh, it's important that, that you know what that is so that when you hear everything that comes after that, it'll make sense to you.
This is Chopin, G minor nocturne, jazzical, classical, jazz.
Thank you. Uh, You're way too kind. And I will be lying if I said that, um, that I wasn't a little nervous. I know it's weird, uh, because I almost never get nervous. Um, but I do, I feel the weight sometimes of this music. Um, I'm not Armenian. Um, you are. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Armenian spirit, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But I love this music just as much as I love classical music and jazz. And so I wanted you to hear this music within the context of classic music. Not classical, not jazz, but music that will stay with you. It matters. It's all about the wording. And it's all about the music. Because what happens is, and it took me many years to kind of figure this out, that everything is all about how you serve the dish, not the dish itself. And, and if you are able to do that uh, in a honest uh, and straightforward way, no BS, um, then it will be at least appreciated. That's the place we start from. Um, Jazz Komitas is not just for Armenians. It's for people like me, who, as of three years ago, never even heard of the word komitas, and I thought I was a learned musician. Because um, I've done hundreds of records and played thousands of concerts and been with all kinds of people, and yet I felt like an idiot when I actually finally sat down at home and listened to a full afternoon of Armenian folk music and komitas on YouTube. That pretty much cemented everything that day because nobody was trying to sell me on anything. I was just sitting at home. And, um, and that brings me to this journey which is still going on today and that I hope never ends. Because I like this music. And if it means that I like it, then it means somebody else like me is also going to like it. And I can't stop until we get it to where it needs to go, which is an international audience, yep. where it's not just a couple of hundred people, but 10,000 people are coming to see concerts. Yes, I think of the Yanni-style concerts. I think of these larger places just as intimately as I do for a hundred people. So that's what I have to say. I'm going to stick with this story. It is the truth. And now I'm just going to go and play some more music. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do until I actually sit down. <laughs> it, it, it's easier this way. Uh, and it also makes it more challenging uh, for the artist as well as for you. Because you deserve just as much the artistry as the people that I work with, like Sting and Alan Menken, Kathleen Battle, and all these other luminaries. You deserve that just as much. So enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is a, a, a very unusual song. I, I actually heard um, a great um, Armenian young singer named Arpi Alta. Uh, we have become friends uh, since I failed in my attempt to get her on this record. Um, but uh, there is a song that she sang called Ari Im Sohak that I really, I loved everything she said when she went to sing this song. And so I went and set a whole jazz quartet thing with her. I don't have a jazz quartet, but I do have the piano. <laughs> that will have to do.
artist uh, and composer, um, Petrosian, a guy who I've never met. Most people I meet, uh, I meet on Facebook. Yeah, this guy was no exception. I heard an opera singer sing this song called Mother of God. And I like this song so much that I wrote the singer on Facebook, because there's no other way I was going to reach out to her, and ask to find out who wrote this song. And she put me in touch with Petrosian, but he was very smart. And he asked for me to do a setting of this and to send this to the singer who sang it. 
I said, well, that's a good amount of pressure. <laughs> um, because if you get it wrong, it means uh, he's never going to speak to you again. And I understand how this works, because uh, I've been reaching out to people I've never met for 40 years. Um, and things happen the way that they happen. Uh, this particular setting is almost note for note. What I, what I played for him. I liked it so much, I kept it. <laughs> this is Mother of God. Uh, most of these things that you hear of uh, Komitas and Armenian uh, folk songs, they're set for very much larger orchestrations. So this is a challenge, setting all this as a piano. But I like that challenge because I get to be my own orchestra. <laughs> I, I, I listen to the beat of my own self. So this is Mother of God. Bye. 
Yeah, I used to think that um, that I could just do this music without thinking about anything else. No, that's not possible. Um, how can you? If you don't understand what the nature of war is, then you can't play this music. Um, nothing ever got served because of war. I'm a firm believer in that. There might be those who differ, um, but I truly believe that war is just not the answer. And somehow we have lost the abilities to be reasonable. And so it is too bad that we have to take such beautiful music and remember them in such stark contrast. And that is another reason, folks, why Janzical Comitas represents light. It is not to forget about the past. Far from it. It is really about paying homage to the past and giving a reason to look forward towards the future. We all do this as humans even if we don't really acknowledge that. But that's part of what I love about Armenian people. That in spite of everything, you are still here. And I can understand that because I'm black. And the things that were leveled to my people 
for almost 500 years, they're still trying to rewrite that story. And I understand that. And that is why I appreciate all those who fight so that the light continues to come out. It matters. And that's why I also truly appreciate you. Because you do not forget. And, and instead of living in the past, you are trying to forge ahead, remembering the past. Never forgetting that, but also building a new life. It is hope that is the quintessential agent of change. There may be those who disagree with that, but that's where I stand. And that is part of the reason why I play. piece of comatose. I love this piece um, because it is not what I thought it was going to be. I actually thought this was going to be a jazz piece with a quartet and a muted trumpet. And we never got to that. Um, it, life wasn't meant to be that way. So when Emma and the team said, go back in that studio and create something, this was one of those pieces, because I said, well, geez, I only know like 25 pieces, songs here. Huh, what's going to make sense? And then it did. It came to me, which is the way music is supposed to. It's supposed to come to you, and then it invites you to move ahead. So this is Shushu.
Uh, it's a rather unusual piece. I'm sure you've never heard of it. I'm going to play it anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is either. <laughs> if you are a true Armenian. No, I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> A little much, even for me. <laughs> Okay, one more piece. It is not our meaning, but it is a great way to end this. Um, it has a rather long title. It's called Baroque Gets Dizzy During a Night in Tunisia. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, I'm probably going to take my jacket off because I'm getting awfully hot. This thing. <laughs> this has all kinds of stuff in it. Um, basically, you know, jazzical started because of classical and because of what I do as a pianist. But it has evolved into so much more since that. Um, Jazzical Comitas is my ninth record in the series. Wow. And that's not even counting all the other things that I've done that they might as well say it's jazzical. Um, with a whole mess of artists, I'm very lucky that what I do has some relevance, even 40 years later. That to me is a blessing. It's not something that, uh, that I'm going to uh, take for granted. It's kind of like getting COVID. <laughs> you know, I had it for five months. And it wasn't good at the very beginning of this. And, um, and I was actually writing jazzical comitas while I was recovering in bed because I couldn't do anything else. I mean, literally, I couldn't walk, I couldn't move, I, it was hard to breathe, but I had a keyboard, and I had a little laptop, and I figured I can do this no matter what, and it actually helped to heal me. Um, it's the power of music, folks. If you're not sharing this with your family and your kids, and that you need to give more of this, because it is the only thing I know that saves and helps all kinds of stuff. I don't need therapy. I just need to play piano. <laughs> it, is, it is that simple. So once again, thank you all. Thank you, Mark. We're, there you are. Thank you, Mark, for everything you've done to make all I'm so incredibly honored. Thank you, Emma. Thank all of you. Um, those who came and were in um, New York with the Armenian Bar Association, Thank you for coming tonight. This is just the beginning. We're not going to say goodbye. We have work to do, folks. <laughs> and it's going to take everybody. And I, 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 I won't say this anymore after I say this. Um, I hope that the friendship that has already started here will last well past this record. That is how we build community. I truly understand that because on Facebook I have 5,000 friends mm -hmm. but I know every single one of them mm -hmm. and if you ask them how do you know Joel they're probably going to have a very long story to tell <laughs> and it's probably all true the good the bad the ugly the indifferent the fantastic but that is how we stay connected. And then we have to find the time to be around each other. That matters. So thank you all and enjoy.